Maka's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Mac here, playing Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice on the Xbox One. In this video, I'll be showing you all 44 of the collectibles available in the game in chronological order. These collectibles are known as Lore Stones, and they are required in order to unlock the Stories from the North achievement or trophy. Overall, most of these collectibles are extremely easy to find, and you're likely to find most of them on your own on your first playthrough. However, there is no chapter select or free roam in this game, meaning that you'll have to do them in one playthrough. Luckily, they do save between playthroughs, so if you do miss one, you'll only have to play up to the point where that collectible is. The first lore stone can be found incredibly easily directly in front of you as soon as you gain control of your character. In order to actually get the collectible, you'll need to walk up to it and then focus with the right trigger and the color of the middle will turn from red to white. You'll also see the progress of the lore stones on the outer ring around the central part and that'll let you know that you're collecting them in order and chapter by chapter. The second lore stone is found as you are progressing through the beach. You'll go under the giant bridge and find this one pretty easily directly in front of you before taking the stairs to your right. Shortly after the previous collectible, you'll have to balance your way across a thin beam at the very top of the area. And as soon as you get to the other side, you should notice this one on the left. You can stand on the edge. Pretend it's going to be okay. But you know that death is near, waiting for you to make that little slip. You can't just wish things away. The world of the dead is ruled by the giant head. You'll then be introduced to some of the combat in the game, and you'll have two options of doors in order to proceed. Before proceeding through one of the doors, make sure you take the collectible in the middle of this room. The Northmen say that in the beginning, there was no Now you'll have the option between the left door, which is the illusion chapter, and the right door, which is the fire chapter. The illusion chapter on the left is technically chapter two, which is what I'm gonna be showing in the video, but you're actually able to do chapter three first if you so desire. Just keep in mind that you can do these either order. So starting off with chapter two, in this case, through that left door, as soon as you go in, you should notice this one pretty obviously on the right hand side of the path. Later on, as you make progress through this chapter, you will come to this area and notice that there is a built up wall on the right hand side, but going through the illusion gate, you can actually destroy that wall and go under and into the structure in order to open the door. After you open the door, you'll have to loop back around to this illusion gate in order to build the wall back up, and then you should be able to enter the structure through the door that we're currently opening. Once you make your way inside, you can climb the stairs and walk across a beam in order to easily find this lore stone. Northmen say that Odin and his brothers killed. You'll end up coming to this large open area where you'll have some fights. After you clear out the enemies, there should be an opening where you can climb up a small ledge in order to proceed with a lore stone directly in front of you. Northmen say you must sacrifice in order to Upon reaching this area, just walk forward and before proceeding, just keep on the right hand side and loop around this small area and you should find a lore stone at the end of the walkway. Because when darkness speaks, it changes everything. Turning home into a foreign land and loved ones into strangers. Exile makes sense when you- Next, upon reaching the gate at the top of the stairs, you'll have a small kind of cutscene and in order to solve all the puzzles, you'll need to make your way over to the left and right side and 
walk through some gates in order to clear up all of the kind of, uh, you know, lit objects in the trees. So what we're going to do is walk forward, and then we're going to actually start on the right-hand side when facing down the hill. And we'll need to walk through both of the following gates. There's this gate, which when we walk through will allow us to cross this bridge directly in front of us, which we will need to get to the right-hand side. And you'll notice the structure directly in front of us. And to get inside of that structure, we'll need to actually knock down this small bridge. On the other side of the bridge, on the left, there is a gate. And we'll have to walk through that gate in order to be able to have access into that structure. So after going through those two gates, you'll now be able to get into that structure, which is actually required for story progression. And once inside there, there is a gate which you are supposed to open in order to proceed. But before kind of proceeding through too far, make sure you go to the right hand side of the area once inside of the structure. You'll see a small little crawl space and if you go inside of that crawl space at the end of the kind of walkway there, you should be able to find the lore stone. The Northmen say that Odin has two... After completing Chapter 2, you'll make your way back into that central room, and you'll now be able to go to the Chapter 3 door, which is the fire door, or vice versa. If you did the fire area first, you'll make your way back and then be able to do the illusion door. But once in Chapter 3, go forward and stick to the right-hand side of the path as much as possible to find a small cave with the first lore stone for the chapter. The Northmen tell this story. Upon proceeding and reaching a bridge that you can't cross, you'll follow a path to the left-hand side and stick to the left in order to find this next one. There's always another way. There's always a way. Find your own way. The Northmen say that the defender of Muspel. Shortly after that, you'll go down and you'll actually go under that bridge we were just standing at. And if you just walk forward through the forest and directly in front of you and a little bit to the right, you should notice the next collectible here. When she finds it, everything will burn. Concentrate, concentrate on where you're going. She needs to remember the path. Everything will burn. Then how will she find the way back? <laughs> she won't. She won't be able to. The Northmen believe that the world will be destroyed. Once you reach the next area with two burned down houses and a rune gate to the left, Make sure you go into the first burned down house on your right hand side. You should be able to easily spot this one. The Northmen say that at Ragnarok, the sons of Muspel. Last but not least, in chapter 3, you will climb a ladder and then end up in this area. If you go to the left hand side, there's a bridge kind of connecting these two buildings. And as you cross the bridge, if you look left, you'll find a rune gate with three uh, different runes on it. But in the second house, just kind of follow along the left-hand path. There's a small little balcony, and you should be able to find this lore stone. And say that what we see as a rainbow is the bridge. We are now on chapter four, and just a quick note: the rest of the video was filmed on PC in order to get all of this guide up as soon as possible when the game launched on Xbox. But once you do gain control of your character, you'll go through the door on your left. You'll notice the rune gate in front of you with the three markings. And if you go to the right hand side, you should find a lore stone. However, you come to the gold covered bridge that leads to hell. From the previous collectible, continue uh, in the same direction and you'll end up on the boat. And then if you kind of go to the front of the boat and look to the right, you should be able to focus on some objects floating in space. And once you focus on them, you will create a staircase uh, leading up to a different area there in kind of that main room we started in. And you'll want to obviously go up this staircase. Once at the top of the staircase, you'll just follow along the path. At the end of the path, there is a ladder going down. Take that ladder and find the lore stone there.
Stella possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Now, moving on to chapter 5, you'll come down a ledge, and you should notice this beach directly in front of you, with a large structure off to the right, and a very obvious lore stone down to your left. The Northmen tell of a great hero. From the previous collectible location, you can turn to the right and then walk towards that bridge structure, taking the ramp on the right-hand side, and spotting a very obvious lore stone on the right hand side of the path. Death for Sigmund and his brother seems certain. From the previous collectible location, just continue down the path and there will be a ladder directly in front of you. You'll want to obviously take that ladder down back to the beach and you'll want to continue along the beach, going behind the docked boat and continuing that way. Just past this boat on the shoreline, you should notice the next lore stone. And again, continuing from the previous collectible, you'll want to continue along the path. You'll notice that there is a white flag hanging from one of the destroyed boats in front of you. Just continue forward, and when possible, you'll have to go kind of through a small little opening here and continue along the left towards that white flag. From afar, she mimicked him. At the end of the path, there is a little bit of a split, and you're supposed to go left to continue the story. However, we're going to go right and quickly pick this collectible up before we continue. Soon after, you should reach a large tree in front of you with a blue glowing light inside, and our objective is to reach that tree. But in order to do so, we'll kind of have to use the paths that go along the outside of the beach and then lead up into it. We should notice a pretty obvious lore stone on the shore uh, as we're kind of going around that tree to get to it. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive. From that previous location, we are now at the halfway point, 22 out of 44 collectibles. You'll continue following the path and you will, you should easily spot this next one kind of directly in front of you after a little bit of clearing. And here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was the way the next few chapters work is that after interacting with the tree, some of the ruins will begin to glow in the color of the blue shard and interacting with them will begin that chapter. So for chapter six, we'll go down and kind of the closest possible shard to us is going to be the Labyrinth Trial. And each one of the next four chapters is a trial and we can kind of do them in a specific order if we want in order to follow along with this guide. As soon as we spawn in on the beach, we can run to the left in order to find the lore stone pretty obviously here. It's as if we conspired to hide death because we have no answer for it. Now, the majority of Chapter 6 takes place inside of the labyrinth, which I'm entering now. And I'll be doing the remainder of the three collectibles in one kind of shot here, one continuous shot. And I would highly recommend that you follow along in this case because the labyrinth can kind of change based on the turns you take inside of it. So it's kind of easiest to just get them over with and, and then get through the labyrinth and not have to worry about rooms changing behind you and whatnot. But as soon as you enter the labyrinth, uh, take the first left-hand turn and keep turning left uh, through the second door. And after you get through that door, just kind of stick to the left-hand side and you should notice your first lore stone. Now, one thing I would recommend doing is, with your fire, interact with the small kind of posts, which you can light on fire 
to keep track of where you have and haven't been, especially if you don't plan on following along with the next series of turns. This is going to be pretty important to kind of keep in mind where you have and haven't been. But we're going to kind of backtrack to go where we came from, and when there's a fork in the road, we're going to turn left. This would have been the right-hand side turn as we kind of entered a certain area, but we're going to keep left as we leave, and we'll end up in kind of the other quadrant of the labyrinth. And directly in front of us, there should be a pretty obvious lore stone. You can pretty easily follow the turns in the video, though. Now, the last lore stone in the labyrinth has a pretty specific set of turns. From the previous collectible, you'll walk forward, and in the first room, you want to take a right-hand side turn. And you'll notice that there is a loop. Every time you go through a door, you end up kind of at the beginning of where you just were. At the second loop, you want to take another right-hand side turn, and then you'll end up in your third loop. In the third loop, you want to take a left-hand side turn. And then in this final doorway, take another right-hand side turn. And then through the final doorway, walking forward, you should notice a lore stone if you take the right-hand side path. It'll be kind of directly in front of you. It's not him, it can't be. That is changing. What? That's not Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mine. So after completing chapter six, you'll end up back at the tree. And next we'll do chapter seven, which will be the tower. And this is a series of like perspective puzzles. In order to access this chapter, we'll jump down to the left this time and then go to the obvious shard and interact with it to spawn into the tower. Now, as soon as we spawn in, walk forward and drop the bridge directly in front of you. Then you'll notice that there are masks that are kind of all over this area, and interacting with them and focusing on them will change this area from present to past. So if it's blue-ish, it's kind of in the present, and if it's reddish, it's in the past. So we're going to go into the past where everything works beautifully and we're going to go up the stairs and notice the lore stone directly in front of us. Let's cross it. The Northmen tell this story about the death. Shortly after the previous collectible, we'll be in the present again in order to walk through a gate. We will shift perspectives into the past in order to get into the tower itself. And inside of the tower, we will notice our lore stone. And if we go up the stairs kind of behind it, that's where we would actually get the rune for the door. Black and white. Once getting the rune for the door and opening it up, going through a second gate, you should notice a very obvious lore stone directly in front of you. I'd probably recommend building the staircase on the right hand side before approaching the lore stone so you can kind of move on quickly. Loki makes a dart. From the previous location, head up the previously built stairs, up the second set of stairs, up the third set of stairs, and notice the lore stone on your right hand side as you enter this area. I cannot see where the Northmen tell how the gods mourn. From the previous collectible, we'll need to make our way upstairs. We will stay in the current timeline. And we will need to do most of this to complete all the puzzles and make our way through the gate anyways. But I figure I'd show it off just so you guys know what's going on. Once you reach the top of the stairs, you should be able to drop the bridge and make your way to the central platform where you can switch perspectives into the past tense. And you can now walk back through that same walkway and follow the path along to the other side in order to find the lore stone kind of located right in the middle here. Now, after grabbing this, there are a couple of steps you'll need to take in order to proceed anyways. And what those are, are to open up this door to the right of the lore stone, and then open up another door to the left of that same lore stone, 
and then we can return back to the central platform. And once we reach the central platform, we will switch perspectives back to the present. After switching to the present timeline, we can now cross the bridge and we can use the two doors we opened in order to gain access to the balcony, go around and behind this area. And now the gate in front of us as we turn this corner should be open, whereas it wasn't open before. Continue walking forward and go through this gate. Turn to the right hand side and then you'll want to drop the bridge back to the central location. Upon dropping the bridge, walk back and switch to the past timeline. Now you'll be able to head back across that bridge we just dropped, take a left hand turn and notice the lore stone before going to the right hand side and finishing off the puzzles. Completing the rest of chapter 7 will bring us back to the giant tree and in order to go through to chapter 8 we will drop down to our left hand side and follow around kind of as if we were going through the tree to the back side interacting with the blue shard in order to go to the swamp area. Upon reaching the swamp area, you'll walk forward through the swamp and you'll end up at this kind of outpost with a bridge across the top. And this has also some illusion gates you'll have to kind of walk through in order to change the world. So walk through the first gate in order to drop the barricade that lets you access this new area. And next to the other gate, you should notice a lore stone. The Northmen speak of a death moon. After that lore stone, you'll have to walk through the illusion gate in order to make this gate. Walk back to the original gate in order to activate it again. So that you can now go back and into the actual tower. Once inside the tower, you should be able to focus on the bridge to rebuild it. At this point, you'll simply want to go down the tower, cross that bridge, and notice the obvious lore stone in front of you as you reach the building. Next up, we have Chapter 9, which is known as Darkness or Blindness, and it has no collectibles. Shortly into Chapter 10, we'll be able to gain access into the large gate here. After gaining access to the gate, you should be able to quickly notice the collectible pretty much in front of us. Later on in chapter 10, you'll reach an area where you have to go underwater and extinguish your torch and then use the beams of light to escape the darkness, as you see on screen. Once you reach the first area, just after extinguishing your torch, you should be able to grab a lore stone just a little bit to the right of the exit. Now what you'll want to do is go quickly back to the beam of light to save yourself. And what I've done is I've actually exited the area and grabbed the torch as part of the objective and lit all of the available torches in the area to have all of the light possible and not really have to worry about all the darkness. I've then also activated the ruined door where I've gotten my three symbols and I've activated one symbol on screen here. 
Now, I don't want to confuse you guys too much. This is all the same area that we were just in. It's just now lit up with all the torches. And as we exit, you should notice that there is a large circular staircase leading up. You can go straight here after getting the lore stone inside of the cave. However, you'll have to backtrack in order to grab the ruin for the gate. So it makes more sense to grab the torch, go back, and then come back here. And instead of going into the main doorway, go into the second doorway at the end of the spiral staircase. And you'll notice that there is a rune. Now keep in mind that if you die or anything like that, definitely keep an eye on the rune progress. As I had a small problem here where I ended up dying and not backtracking enough. And I ended up actually losing some of my progress. So definitely keep in mind that you should be progressing the shape of the actual disc as you're progressing through the level. Now the fourth collectible in chapter 10 is located after going across a small balance beam. You'll notice some gates in front of you and go to the right hand side in order to activate this. From this location we can now go down the kind of ramp stairs, fall and jump kind of over the ledge here and we'll end up in the main area where we'll have a very obvious lore stone on our left hand side. This will be the fifth out of six of the lore stones in chapter 10. Make sure your ring is progressing as it should. And so Rian, the dragon Fafnir is so large. Now I've went ahead and skipped the actual process of solving the gate. Uh, once solved, just walk through it. You'll end up in a tunnel cave system type thing uh, where it's a very linear path and you'll notice a very obvious lore stone on your right hand side as you are walking through this area. The tender guiding flame in a world so black. The longer... Last but not least we are in chapter 11 almost finishing off the game now you will climb a ladder after reaching this huge pit with a bunch of like particles coming out of it. Uh, after climbing the ladder, you'll have a linear path where you have to jump up on a ledge and then you'll follow the path and you'll have a pretty obvious lore stone directly in front of you at the foot of some stairs. The Northmen say the world will come to an end. Upon reaching the broken bridge, you'll have a small little cutscene as you see on screen. Once you gain control of your character, turn around and go directly behind yourself. And in this little kind of alcove, you'll notice number 42 out of 44. I'm now back at that same bridge we were just at. However, I have kind of repaired a small piece of it in order to be able to get onto it a little bit further. And once I get onto it a little bit further, I should be able to kind of turn around and look behind me to my right in order to focus on a tunnel kind of door. And I should be able to build this new path in order to follow. And inside of this path, I should notice a very obvious lore stone directly in front of me. The Northmen see that at Ragnarok... Now, directly after the previous collectible, we'll turn around and head through this tunnel. We'll have to crouch through, and we'll notice some spirally stairs. Halfway through the stairs, there is a door where we would proceed to beat the level. However, we want to keep climbing the spiral staircase all the way to the very top in order to find our final 44th lore stone and hopefully grab the Stories from the North achievement slash trophy upon getting it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If it was helpful, I'd really appreciate if you drop a like. I would really appreciate if you share the video with a friend. And a special thanks to all the amazing people on Patreon who support the show. Especially Doc Cupcake, who you can check out on Mixer. Thank you guys so much for watching.